Welcome to part two of chapter one. Uh, this slide begins a series illustrating how we show ionic bonds forming between atoms. If you recall from general chemistry, <coughs> ionic bonds are metal to non-metal bonds, positive metal cations, negative non-metal anions. And uh, although organic chemistry focuses a lot on carbon and hydrogen and oxygen, uh, that is non-metal elements bonding to each other, uh, we will see some ionic formulas and that's the easier place to start when it comes to talking about bonding. And one of the things that's true about molecules uh, that have ionic bonds is that uh, they always form compounds in which the atoms appear in certain ratios. Sodium chloride is the famous example and this formula up top is indicating equal numbers of sodium and chlorines. That's because what's over here in yellow is what's driving all of these reactions to take place. Metals like to get rid of any valence electrons they have, and for sodium there's only one of them. Nonmetals like to gain electrons, usually to have a set of eight. Chlorine is much happier as a negatively charged chloride ion at the bottom. And so both atoms are accomplishing this task of getting rid of partially filled valence levels and so they tend to do that and metals love to give electrons away so uh, there's plenty of examples this next slide shows magnesium and oxygen accomplishing the same task it's just a matter of transferring two electrons to make that happen uh, and that's really the key word for ionic bonds is transfer of electrons uh, metals react with non-metals like oxygen very easily uh, because they have a desire to get rid of their valence electrons Nonmetals are looking for eight. Uh, that's going to be a rule that, that helps us a lot as we go along, is looking for eight electrons around nonmetals. Uh, this next example illustrates why magnesium chloride has one magnesium and two chlorines in its formula. Why two chlorines? Well, one chlorine isn't enough. Uh, magnesium will be happy to get rid of one of its valence electrons to a chlorine. Uh, but magnesium wants to get rid of both of those valence electrons, not just one of them. So it ends up finding a second chlorine to finish that off. And so when that is done, uh, you have to have two chlorides for every one magnesium in order for the chlorines to each end up with eight and for magnesium to empty out its valence level. So these atoms are accomplishing the same task as the sodium and chlorine. Here's sodium and oxygen doing something very similar. You need two sodiums for each one oxygen in order for the oxygen to end up with eight here. And in each case, I'm starting with how many valence electrons these atoms would have before they bond, and then at the bottom showing where the electrons end up. And that's pretty much the ionic bonding story. For organic chemistry, though, this question is more important for us. How do atoms bond if there aren't any metals to get electrons from. Uh, hydrogen doesn't exist as individual atoms but rather as pairs of hydrogens and it's because they need to be able to share their one electron with a neighbor in order to become more stable. And for hydrogen it only needs two electrons to be happy. Uh, that makes it a simple case uh, but two electrons for each hydrogen gives it the arrangement that helium has and for hydrogen that's what it's going for. For other nonmetals, though, like I say, eight's the magic number. Chlorine can take electrons from sodium, but if there aren't metals around, then it will share with itself, it will share with hydrogen, uh, it will share with lots of other nonmetals, but always for the purpose of getting eight around them. Um, these examples show water and ammonia, why their formulas are what they are, the same kind of thing. And there are examples like these uh, throughout chapter one. We see double bonds and triple bonds whenever atoms can't get the job done simply by sharing single pairs of electrons. But notice the oxygens and the nitrogens at the bottom, they end up with eight electrons on each atom. That's really the key. And a slide like this tells us why we might care about all that bonding because it helps us explain uh, behavior as atoms bond to one another. <coughs> 